dogs and big fish. That's a lot of mahi mahi. Last time on our cross-country Peruvian food tour. It looks like a cousin of mine. <laughs> Can you see? Oro and I enjoyed flamboyant fishies in the capital of Lima. Big, blue, giant forehead like my friend Oro. <laughs> Just kidding, you have a normal size forehead. Now we're leaving the coast and heading inland up the Andes Mountains to the city of Arequipa. Here you'll find a culinary identity different from the rest of Peru, an identity shaped by ingredients only found here, like meat from the alpaca. One protein source that stands out above any other, the guinea pig. Now I know for those in my motherland, guinea pigs are anxious, squealing, fuzzy friends that stare at you through beady eyes at the local pet store. Oh, look at that, that's a foot. But here, guinea pigs are food. And it's just as common a protein as chicken or beef. They even have a national holiday for the eating of kui. Today, I'm on a mission to learn why locals adore these hairy rodents. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, it is fresh. Yeah, don't squeeze the life out of it. And soon, I'll learn for myself what they taste like. This is the way they've been cooking this creature maybe for hundreds of years at this point. It's super traditional, and it looks like things haven't changed from the time they began. But first, I'm headed to Arequipa's biggest market, where I'm being introduced to a different type of protein. This right here, what do you think? Are we eating that? It smells like jerky. This here is a llama fetus. Do people eat these? Eso se come? No, ese es para pago una Yes, I know, bullet dodged. Instead, it's crucial for certain rituals of the local indigenous people. They use this to pay tribute to what they call Pachamama, which is a mother earth. They're using different ways. They burn it, like in Christmas, for example. Another purpose is hanging in front of a business to protect from bad influence to come and also to attract better health and better prosperity. But no consumption, no eating. No, porque es this way? It's like who wants to eat bones? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen more unusual stuff than that. This is the biggest market in South Peru. Every aisle reveals clues about this region's unique culinary offerings. Produce, protein, and ready-to-eat food made quick and for cheap. If you're overwhelmed, I recommend ordering whatever the locals are noshing on for their morning meal. Soon, we'll be trying a local breakfast, but not before I show Aura what makes this market truly different from any other. Oosh. Oh man, I wish I didn't see this. <laughs> This is a guinea pig. In Spanish, it's known as cuy. Ma'am, do you know how far people eating guinea pig goes back in Peru? People have eaten cuy since 5,000 years ago. 5,000 years? Yes. Guinea pig meat was a crucial component to the everyday lives of the Incan people who once dominated this mountain range. They even have a national holiday for the eating of cuy. How does that not make you excited? Even with the Spaniards' introduction of chicken, pigs, and cows to South America, this guinea pig eating tradition is still going strong. How much is it for one of these? Around five, six dollars. It seems like that's more expensive than chicken, no? Claro. It's not because of the size, it's because it's more healthy. It's very good for your body defenses. It boosts your defenses. Naturally. So that's why it's a little bit more pricey than a chicken. Today, we're going deep down the guinea pig rabbit hole, trying an old recipe that only few still remember. Lucky for us, we found our chef. Mary Lou Mendoza is the owner of a local food stall in San Camilo Market, and she carries with her an ancient guinea pig recipe. But before we experience that, we're sitting down to a typical Arequipa breakfast. This is a big breakfast. Acá se come así. She said that we eat like that. Yes, I'm looking at the menu. It says Americanos. Is this a dish designed for Americans? Yes, Americans, but not the American that you're seeing because it's about diversity in the Americas, not necessarily the US. Like North and South America. Exactly. It starts with arroz con pollo, or chicken rice. Next, a noodle cake called pastel de fideos. Then there's Peruvian fried beef ribs. There's a fried and stewed pork belly, a rocoto pepper stuffed with potato and ground meat, and finally some fresh onion and tomato on top. We have the rice here. What is making the rice green? Cilantro. Cilantro. Oh, oh. That is nice. really delicious. From there, it's like a giant hash brown, except for that it's like two inches thick. And literally potato cake. Those are noodles. That's not potato. No, it's papa. No, no, no. No, it doesn't have potato at all. It looks like, oh, come on, that's what I'm saying. It looks like hash brown, but really what it is, it's a pasta cake with some fried cheese on top. It's like a lasagna without tomato. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. We've got pork belly. I want to take a bite of that. This is a female baby pig. Mm. I could feel that it was female. Oh, it's delicious. Sí, el lechon. Lechon? Oh, I mean, any place where the Spaniards have been, the lechon remains for hundreds of years. <laughs> 
Yeah. I'm just so curious. We were just in Lima. Lima seems to be the melting pot of Peru. It gets inspiration from all over the country and perhaps all over the continent. But here in Arequipa, what makes food different from anywhere else? Lima is the capital. Everything goes there. But Arequipa is more agricultural. Everything that goes to most of the country comes from here. This is the base of the production of food in Peru. Perched at an elevation of 7,600 feet, Arequipa serves as a gateway between the coast and the Andes Mountains. While most people associate Arequipa with its stunning landscapes and ancient Incan infrastructure, its culinary offerings tend to be overlooked. That is, until today. The stuffed rocoto, which is this stuffed chili, is a very old tradition here in the Arequipa region. Mm. Mm, tastes almost like pepperoni. And there's meat inside, there's cheese, there's peas, there's carrots. It's like Peruvian tater tot hot dish. Thanks to its long history and distinctive climate. I do have to try this because, not just because they're beef ribs, but they're from a baby. Arequipa's cuisine blends European and Andean traditions to create an array of unique dishes. You can taste the innocence. Innovative recipes and an open-mindedness towards peculiar proteins. Oro, it's time I reveal our mission for today. Guinea pig. It seems to be this interesting, unique staple that's part of Peruvian culture here. Ma'am, your thoughts on guinea pig? Tiene muchas propiedades. Of course, she loves cooking with it, and it's not also tasty, but it's also very good for your health and your well-being. It's good for you. It's good for, for okay, I guess. Later today, Miss Mary Lou will prepare her long passed down family recipe. But first, She's requested we source some fresh guinea pigs. That's why we're headed here. The main reason I wanted to come here is because my friend Oro has never seen a guinea pig before. I've seen it on pictures. If the sight of sweet, innocent guinea pigs bound for a dinner plate makes you sad, take solace in knowing the number consumed each year is barely more than 65 million. There, feel better? Guinea pig farming is nothing strange in Peru, especially in this region. Whether short-haired, curly-haired, or cow-licked, altogether these pens hold 500 guinea pigs. They have two purposes here. One purpose is for eating, and the other purpose is to breed them and take them to compete. Like a beauty pageant. Eh, uh, si. Sí. If I was at a show right now and they're judging this guinea pig, what are they going to be judging? El, bueno, el peso, como... He said that this one here, if you can touch it, you feel it, his hair is more pristine and more soft. And it looks heavy, but good looking heavy. I don't know if you know what I mean. Like stocky. Yeah. It's like, like me. Right? Huh. I want to know how the process works from beginning to end. Where does the process the males are usually very solitary. In each group, there's always one male for all the females. Nice. And actually, just two hours after giving birth, she's ready to get pregnant again. Guinea pigs can multiply like rabbits. The length from birth to fry pan is 47 days. And they only require a bit of alfalfa and grain. Oro, I'm gonna need you to catch one. What do you mean catch one? Oro? Hey, man. How you feeling? Encaged. Keep in mind, they technically could bite you. All right. What? In a country where the average monthly salary is $470, hey. I'm starting to see the appeal Hello. of these personal-sized pigs. Okay, he's tapping it on the shoulder as if it's going to say, yes, senor, may I help you? By my experience with a crocodile, if you touch them like softly, they relax. Yeah, take a look at that clip. Ah! You see? Very relaxed. Hey. Or I've been in these situations. At some point, you just have to commit. I heard that before. <laughs> from you? Oh, I thought from your wife. <laughs> no. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, it is fresh. You got to pick it up like a cat, kind of by the scruff. I have never picked up a cat. Oh. I have no <laughs> You're giving me the wrong reference. I, I think I got it. Oh, right, you got to lift it up. I did it. Okay, you got to stand up. All right, boy, you're holding it like the Lion King. You did it! I got it! That's fantastic! It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You ready to head out? Okay. Stay right there. I'll be right back in five to ten minutes. With our guinea pig in hand, Oro and I are headed to a local home where we'll reunite with Mary Lou. The settlement belongs to her friend Luis, and he has a delightful surprise just outside his home. This is incredible. Folks in the USA, they might have a chicken coop so they can have fresh eggs daily. Here in Arequipa, on the mountainside, this man has built a little pen for guinea pigs. There's maybe 20 terrified guinea pigs inside of here right now. What does he do with them? When they get big, plump, and juicy, he eats them. <laughs> dispatching and removing the inedible bits, Mary Lou coats the meat with corn flour, then deep fries it until it cooks all the way through. In another pot, Mary Lou simmers minced garlic, 
pepper, pepillon sauce, purple onion, and cumin. When the time is right, she pops in the meat. Finally, she adds dried cilantro, ground peanuts, coconut milk, boiled potatoes, and a pinch of salt, cooking it down until the water evaporates. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Oh man, looks like chicken. Uh, yeah, what about the head with the ears? Oh, that's the head. Oh, look at that, that's the foot. <laughs> the skin is really thick. I think we should jump into it. I'm just gonna kinda watch what they do. She starts with just plain white rice. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> like this? Mm -hmm. Oh, it tastes like white rice. I've peeled this off. The meat is super soft the way she stewed it. I got a bunch here, let's go for it. <laughs> or I'll screw that bite. That's just a bunch of rice. Get rid of that. No, it's, okay. Please, come on. All right, cheers. cheers. Mmm, mm. the sauce is delicious. Like it almost tastes like a really savory pasta sauce, except for the cumin. Oh, it's good. It's, it's really good. There's a lot of fat on it because it's wrapped in this skin that is quite thick. What's tough is I'm trying to figure out what animal to me it most tastes like. Oh, that's a nice see. Oh, this is a bite. That's a real bite. Mm. That's a man's bite. Soft, tender, neutral tasting meat with strong tasting seasonings. It's really delicious. It's somewhere kind of between chicken and pork. Ah, for you. She would say that the guinea pig is like a healthier version of a chicken with more mineral, no cholesterol, more protein value. What do you think? What animal is this like? El cuy para mí es he say that comparing a guinea pig to any other animal is a disservice to the guinea pig. <laughs> it's an insult. He, yeah, he say that, please, let's just keep it that it tastes like guinea pig because he's in love to the flavor. Did you grow up having guinea pigs being raised next to your home? Same. Sí. Of course, since he was a kid, there was always guinea pig around them. There is no a countryside house here without its good pen of guinea pigs. That's fascinating because I didn't realize I I didn't know guinea pig was so deep in the culture, in the cuisine here. I know people at home watching this maybe from the USA or some other such country, they're wondering, how could you do this? They're cute, they're pets. When you look at them, do you think they're cute? Uh, I does. He respects both opinions. The opinion that he's a pet and he's cute, and the opinion that he has, which is, is Yummy is food. If you live in a place where you can raise it as a pet and you have all the elements for you, you know, you don't really need to eat this. That makes sense for you to call it a pet. But mm. when you live like him, like people here who live in the countryside, when they have less resources, an easy resource that you can grow by yourself and it can feed you and your family, he thinks like it's really hard to just see it as a pet. As beloved as the guinea pig is for home cooking, this proud tradition was perfected and presented in restaurants for more than a hundred years. Located in the heart of Arequipa, La Lucila Picanteria is a century-old restaurant. I'm here to try their best-selling item, guinea pig fried whole. Ladies and gentlemen, I am in the kitchen right now with Mr. Umberto. I'm excited because this guy is the hands, the vision behind the guinea pig right here. We're about to see how it gets cooked. Sir, take it away. One guinea pig at a time descends into the pan of oil. The oil is not that hot yet, but it's about to be very, very hot. From here, he has these big iron weights that he slaps on. He puts that on the body. Soon, this oil is gonna start bubbling and get incredibly hot. Once he's done, he's gonna switch it to another pan where he shallow fries it for 10 minutes so the meat can get super crispy. That is it. That's the whole process. It looks simple, but it ain't easy. This guy's got many, many reps. You can tell. Look deep in his eyes. Can we get a quick zoom deep in his eyes? That's a man who's seen some things. Probably thousands of guinea pigs being fried. Delicioso? Delicioso. One thing I really like about this kitchen is that they're really doing it the old style. They could replace all of this, all the brick. They could have like a gas oven here, but that would be super boring. The restaurant's kitchen is a cultural heritage site, meaning it looks now much like it did over 100 years ago. They eat this one in parties. It's like a Filipino lechon. A mini Filipino lechon. A personal lechon. Pochon. Poca lechon. Okay, very good. Ma'am, this looks incredible. Meet the woman behind it all, Miss Ruth. She's running the business passed down by her grandmother. My first question is, what's this? It's a digestive alcohol. They call it turn on and turn off. You'll feel that. Uh, you can feel the anise. Yeah, I feel the anise down to my anise. To anise. <laughs> <laughs> you can see there is no utensils on the table mm. because the only way to eat this is with the. You don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. All right. Okay, you don't have to do that. Or let's start with this. At the last location, we didn't even try the organs. We've got liver, we've got kidneys. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Oh, crunchy. Oh, really crunchy. Mm. Completely different experience. How come you're not eating? She's saying she's very having a lot of fun seeing us eating. <laughs> <laughs> the liver is half chewy, half insanely crispy. It's like a liver snack. I'm gonna just break off the back leg. 
Oh, yes. The meat is insanely crunchy. Man, this smells handsome. Let me see. I agree 100%. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Crispy, greasy, crunchy. It's wild because you know the last preparation we had was good too, but they're mm. just vastly different. There, the skin was like kind of gloopy, soft, and really rich. And here, it's just really crunchy. Yeah. Now, I want to get into that meat. Listen, this is good stuff right here. Cheers. Mm. We tried the organs, we tried the skin, we tried the meat. The only thing remains is- So we're done, right? We're done. The only thing that remains is the treasure within the head, the brain. I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh, 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 oh. That's definitely the brain. I would say it's twice the size of a chicken brain. It's soft, it's gushy. This is the final bite of the day, Oro. No come normalmente se ever. Normalmente no. Normally they don't eat it. But guess what? We're not normal, especially Oro. He's not normal. Cheers. Mm, fatty. It dissolves in your mouth. Creamy. Mm. To me, it basically tastes like a chicken brain. It tastes about as a brain should. My question to you, you know, we talked to a chef in Lima about maybe the top three signature foods that represent Peru. So not guinea pig. No. Not in the top five? <laughs> no, I love guinea pig. It's more on the fringe though. Yeah. Do you think guinea pig should be included on that list? Okay. Sí. Yes, because Arequipian food has a high place on Peruvian food. Guinea pig is one of the most requested dishes in Arequipa. So making the math, Arequipa food being the best, and this one being one of the best dishes in Arequipa, she said that should be top one per second place. Really? I love getting different points of view. You know, food is so subjective. Depends on where you come from, your background, and your experience and what you've been exposed to day by day. Obviously, we've seen so far that food in Peru is very wide ranging, and this is just another fantastic element of the food here. Ma'am, thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Can I say something? Si. I know you're trying to challenge me, giving me every time more weird food, but I think it's taking a different effect on me. I think instead of scaring me and challenging me, I'm getting more curious and more open in eating different things that I never I thought it opened up a new part of my brain. Overall, good? Really good. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. She said she loved your eyes. Are you, is this all for real? No, yeah, I'm just translating. Oh, thank you very much. You're very kind. Fantastic. Oro. Hey, any minuto? Uh, the meat is coming. Menudo the group? Uh, it's, uh, like it means any minute, I think. Ah. I need to tell you something that you don't know. I used to be somebody who doesn't drink, but thanks to you, I'm an alcoholic now. Oh. No. <laughs> no. No. Okay. When I drink this, I have endorphins immediately. I feel good. Mm, when Cheers. I drink this, I don't see the queen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. That is the end of this video. Let the record show that Oro is standing on a step right now. I hope you enjoyed this wide-ranging discussion and video on guinea pigs. There's literally nothing else we could do. Everything you wanted to know about Peruvian guinea pigs and how they're cooked, done. We oh. were the guinea pigs of the guinea pigs. Mm. I want to say a huge thank you to my man Oro right here, handshake. Guys, you can follow Oro right here on his Instagram. He has an Instagram right here, and you can follow his fun adventures in Miami and around the world. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. All right, Oro, I think we should eat other types of pigs. Wait, okay. Because like there's guinea pigs, but what about, have you ever heard of long pig? Long pig, no. That's what they call humans. <sighs> that makes a lot of sense. Let's go eat a human.